Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Restricted Republic. My name is Justice Knight. I can't thank you enough for being here. I'm sure you've heard by now that Nancy Pelosi and many others have announced that there will be a 9-11 type slash style commission slash investigation slash witch hunt slash inquisition. Because let's just call it what it is, and we'll truly look at both sides of the aisle and everyone involved in the events that happened in the Capitol. It's necessary that if they're going to do this, they they look at both sides of the aisle, but of course they won't. And America, in many ways, is rebelling because now they don't seem to care about the two-party system anymore. We're going to get into some statistics that show they want actually a three-party system, a third party. And Why? Well, it's all wrapped up in the details of this investigation and a few more documents we're going to cover very quickly here. But before I do, if you haven't joined us yet over at Rumble or BitChute or Telegram, I hope you will. I'll leave all the links below. I heard that now Parler will be up and running here again shortly, thankfully. Well, at least for now. We're also on Gab because Gab's been there the whole time on their own servers. And that becomes especially relevant as we move forward in this story, because as a portion of this commission, there'll be many people cooperating with, well, let's call it gathering intelligence. And that intelligence will be handed to them on going back many, many years in your activity, what you did, and who you may have communicated with, and what groups you may have joined, and what you believed in. Hope you're ready for it. We were. That's why we prepared Restricted Republic well over a year ago for this exact day. It's happening now, before your very eyes, where the bastions for truth will become less and less. It will be controlled government and corporate media will be controlling all the news narratives. So if you don't want that, if you don't desire that, you desire truth with no sponsors, no advertisers, beholden to no one, join us at RestrictedRepublic.com right now. Special deal. Use discount code TRUMP at monthly checkout. That's going to get you $5 a month for 12 months, 14 days for free just to make sure you like it. I'm sure once you're there, though, you'll quickly realize, like at the end of this story, why we transition over there. Because there's a lot of details I'd like to say to you, but there's only one place I can. So let's immediately get back into this story now. And that headline that I read to you prior from the Washington Post, Pelosi says there will be a 9-11 commission style panel to examine January 6th Capitol Right. The headline's pretty clear. The details, however, have yet completely been defined. They gave us a few little breadcrumbs. In this message from Nancy Pelosi, it states, for the past few weeks, General Honoré has been assessing our security needs by reviewing what happened on January 6th and how he we must ensure that it does not happen again. He's been working with the committees of jurisdiction and will continue to make proposals. It is clear from his findings and from the impeachment trial that we can't let go, I paraphrase there, that we must get to the truth of how this happened to protect our security. And Nancy, I do agree with you. We we must get to the truth, the total and complete truth of who knew what, which would include you. But I'm sure that's why you're heading the creation of the committee so that you don't have to answer. It's why you also didn't want to be called as a witness in the impeachment trial. But I'll digress for a moment. So back to clear from his findings, we must get to the truth of how this happened to protect our security, our security, our security. Our next step will be to establish an outside independent 9-11 type commission to investigate and report on the facts. That should be in single quotes and causes related to the January 6, 2021 domestic terrorist attack, which none of us, not on this network either, ever find violence or those actions acceptable. That's not the point of the broadcast domestic terrorist attack on the United States Capitol complex. And relating to the interference with the peaceful transfer of power, including facts and causes relating to the preparedness and response of the United States Capitol Police and other federal, state, and local law enforcement in the National Capitol region. Well, Nancy, who is responsible for Capitol security? Now, go get that mirror in the room really quick and go take a peek at it, and then can you get back to the American public of who is responsible, who oversees the capital security. Just, we'll, we'll leave it there. As we prepare for the commission, it is also clear from General Honoré's interim reporting that we must put forth a supplemental appropriation to provide for the safety of members and the security of the capital. Going a little bit further now, plenty of evidence. Wait now. Let me get myself out of the way so you can read that title. Plenty of evidence. Nancy Pelosi. Here, let's just let you listen for yourself. There's another world today. Um, 
There was a chance that Nancy Pelosi would have ended up being being called as a witness. She did not want to be called as a witness because there is a substantial amount of evidence that she, as the presiding officer, was pre-warned of something might be happening on January 6, and there is plenty of evidence to suggest that she was not doubling down on security on that day, and the former boss of the Capitol Police would have testified to that very point. Now, I guarantee you don't hear that on your mainstream media news, corporate-run news, if you're still watching it. And that's why you're here, Restricted Republic, and that's what we provide you. Those little bits of information that you have to go overseas to listen to because they're the ones who are allowed to still factually report all sides of the argument. And that's all we ask anybody to do. Any media should report on both sides of the argument. doesn't mean I agree with one side or the other because... In many cases, I don't. They're both just completely, completely, insanely wrong at this point in time. But now we have to listen to the other talking head of Swalwell, who suddenly is back in the spotlight, seems to be trying to push aside what happened with his Chinese spy to assure, as he says here in the wake of Capital Riots, we need a 9-11 Commission white nationalist task force. There's no moving on. Uh, you know, January 6th is a day, sadly, that we'll all remember. I do think that we have to take a approach that we took after September 11 and, and root out uh, white nationalism, uh, terrorism from our country. I, I do believe we need a September 11 style commission. Take it outside of Congress. I don't want this in Congress, frankly. I think it should be an independent commission uh, appointed outside of Congress from scholars, experts, statespersons who can tell us you know, what, what happened and how we can defeat it. And, and then inside Congress, that's where we can pass Adam Schiff's Protect Our Democracy Act, which would Uh, really clean up a lot of the vulnerabilities that Donald Trump exposed. Now, Eric, whatever are you referring to? Well, luckily for my audience, they already know about this Protect Our Democracy Act. And you name one of my least favorite politicians, which would be Adam Schiff, and this act, to be more specific, the Protecting Our Democracy Act. On Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020, the House Democrats introduced the Protecting Our Democracy Act, a landmark comprehensive reform package that will prevent presidential abuses, restore our system of checks and balances, strengthen accountability and transparency, and give Congress unlimited power. Sorry, that wasn't in there, but it should be added if you just read the context of much of this document. I'll drop myself out of the way. Trump has sought to systematically and shamelessly tear down the guardrails designed to protect our democracy and the rule of law. That's why we need new reforms that will restore our system of checks and balances. That is why we must act now. Speaker Pelosi directed committee chairs to write a package of sweeping reforms to ensure that no president can abuse the power of their office, as Trump has done. Boy, they can't just get him off their mind, can they? The result is the Protecting Our Democracy Act. Together, the reforms in this bill reflect our determination to defend our democracy from enemies foreign and Well, in their minds, more importantly, domestic, and to ensure the vision of the founders live on for generations to come. Ensure that no president is above the law. Suspend the statute of limitations for any federal offense committed by a sitting president or vice president, whether it was committed before or during their term in office. To ensure the presidents and vice presidents could be held accountable for criminal conduct just like every other American and not use their offices as a shield to avoid legal consequences. I guess the laws in place already don't pertain. They want to extend that further. But let's go into the just little bit of the body of the entire letter. We're going to enforce congressional subpoenas, reassert congressional power of the purse, strengthen congressional oversight of presidential emergency declarations, provide security for political interference and justice, provide Inspector General complete independence to assure he can audit everything that nasty president may do, protect whistleblowers and assure their identities can never be revealed so nobody could protect themselves against them, and provide accountability for acting officials, strengthen the Hatch Act enforcement and penalties and overall make sure that we have all the power we need so nobody can make a decision but we the almighty congress and that is what that is in our opinion so much about and that's why now nancy pelosi who's calling for that 9-11 style commission on capital insurrection should really assure that that's what she wants remember she's a little bit upset about everything that's happened What we saw in that Senate today was a cowardly group of Republicans who apparently have no options because they were afraid 
to defend their job, respect the institution in which they served. Imagine that it would be vandalized. Oh, these cowardly senators who couldn't face up to what the president did and what was at stake for our country are now going to have a chance to give a little slap on the wrist. We sent your people. I'm sorry, it's, it's Eric Swalwell's dumbs that are driving me insane during this clip. Just insane. How nervous are you about what you're doing exactly, are you, Eric? People for using stationery for the wrong purpose. We don't censure people for inciting insurrection that kills people in the Capitol. Mommy, I'm so sorry. Mom, I'm so sorry. I'll do whatever you say. I swear I will do whatever you say. Okay, Nancy. Oh, Eric, come on. Have a little bit of a backbone there. I mean, you're the one calling for for and helping to assure that you are now the talking head for the 9-11 style slash type commission. You, you forced yourself into the headlines. Be very cognizant because if there is truly an investigation, it should be an investigation of both sides of the aisle. Where all failures were, that's all we're asking for. We're not asking for anything and any form of acceptance of what occurred. No, rather we're asking for fairness and equality, which of course we know, unfortunately, that simply just won't happen. But what else did Eric have to say? With the Department of Justice, you know, a white nationalism uh, task force to make sure that they are understanding at the earliest of ages how people are being radicalized if there are, in fact, training camps. And in our evidence, we found uh, that the Oath Keepers, uh, a group uh, in particular, that they do have like training camps and an initiation process, very much like international terrorist groups uh, do. So we're going to have to make sure we use all the tools and resources we have to find these groups, uh, to defeat these groups, and, and then bring them you know, to justice. Uh just want to make sure everybody's aware of what's coming. They want to start from very early ages, assuring that they can identify those roots of radicalization, make sure that they can identify those groups that may be trading that radicalization, and ensure they are brought to justice. Yeah. Yeah, you should be nervous. <laughs> they, they, they've proven not to have a level head within these matters. And how much and how large of a group will this encompass exactly? What will they be doing? Is this with political motivation behind us? Nobody wants to see radicalization in our nation. Of course not. But they believe it is a widespread, monstrous issue that needs to be dealt from all levels. Anytime you start a commission like this, it should always be cause for concern because it never seems to go away. The problem isn't just one insurrection, it's mass radicalization. Extremist is faster, more collaborative, and happening at a far wider scale than it used to. And why do you think? We're going to close with this article just so you understand how expanding this will be. And that's probably not the right word, but... Stuff like this, it's hard to find the right word sometimes. Mass radicalization is a much larger phenomenon in which you have tens of thousands, if not millions of individuals who are vulnerable. See, that's how big it will get. Millions of people are vulnerable. The, through the messages they receive from very influential people. Who are they talking about with these influential people, you wonder? They're, they're speci specifying Trump. They will here in just a minute. First, you have to have vulnerable audience receptive to extremist narrative. Individuals who are scared, angry, isolated, and looking for answers that satisfy their own personal biases. Looking to cast blame for their problems on someone else because we shouldn't blame the pandemic for causing any issues in folks' lives. Not at all. They should just simply blame it on themselves for not taking the precautions necessary to protect themselves, keep their jobs employed when um, our own Congress and House of Representatives and Senate can't seem to meet to get a st simple stimulus through to the folks that need it. But again, I digress. They find narratives that tell them that their problem is not their fault. The second thing you need is an influential voice pushing the extremist narrative. And over the past four and a half years, we have had a very influential political leader a.k.a. President Donald Trump pushing a narrative that is not only polarizing, not only highlighted that the far right and left are far apart on political issues, which, again, in, in, in our humble opinion, is that not the same thing that Nancy Pelosi and Eric Swalwell are doing, and every time they make a statement and slam down on the podium, is that not also identifying further divide? None of either side of the aisle is good right now at, at putting people together. It doesn't seem to be their interest. It seems to be continual divide. So what's the final thing you need to trigger all this? A mechanism to spread the narrative to the masses. 
Historically, mass radicalization took time. So why doesn't it take time now, according to their opinion? Because we're out of paper newspapers and we're into social media. And that platform is simply not acceptable. It spreads these messages too quickly. This new reality, or as they quote, our reality now is one in which a radicalizing message can be broadcast to hundreds of millions of people in a matter of seconds. The main effect of the internet on radicalization is that it speeds the process up quite considerably. Think about someone in 1980 or 1990s radicalizing into the white power movement. You had to know someone in your real world life who was involved in it. Now it's just a click away. So those conditions are spread and they give very specific definitions, exactly what we've keyed in on of Telegram, Parler, and Gab. They just don't have the reach of Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. They can reach millions of people, but not hundreds of millions. So we must make sure that that message can't be put out. And law enforcement must reinstitute some sort of countering violent extremist programs that we started in 2011, but Trump knocked down. So if that was all true and America was behind it 100% and truly believed there was this mass issue outside of a few people who did things that they should not have done, then why in this Gallup poll is there support for a third U.S. political party? And it's not one side of the aisle or another driving this. No, not at all. You see the acceptance for a third party is now up at 62%. That's a monstrous job. Only 33% feeling the current parties are doing an adequate job. It's a Republican and a Democrat cited survey. Republican now rising from 40% to 63%, believing that there is a need for a third party. You'll see some of them still want a more conservative Republican party. 40% is the highest. But now we'll go to the Democrats who are split in the very left-hand column. All Democrats, want 34% want to see the party more liberal, and 34% want to see the party more moderate. Split directly down the middle. Biden has succeeded in one thing, dividing his own party. So why would 62% of Americans feel the need for a new party? Because America realizes what's happening to it. They realize that this is a never-ending series of investigation and impeachments. The only work that the House of Representatives and Senate isn't doing is anything for we the people. And that doesn't matter what party you're a part of. Because now everyone's coming to the realization they are now simply there to assure they realize their own political devices. And that doesn't involve we the people. And that's unfortunate. But it's why we bring you the news we do. It's why now I'm going to go off on an absolute rant as to what this actually means. And I'll show you in quotes because they've told us what it actually means. And it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. And I don't care if you're on the left side of the aisle. It will encompass you too eventually. Who disagrees with the ruling party, no matter what side of the aisle it is, and in all your interest, that should never be of the interest of we the people. So if you haven't subscribed to us here, if you haven't gone to Rumble, Bitch you, Telegram, Gab, join us, Restricted Republic. It's very easy to look up. Most importantly, if you want to hear what a... Uh, a, a rant sounds like, if you want to hear what truth and reality and news sounds like, then join RestrictedRepublic.com. Again, using discount code TRUMP, $5 a month for 12 months, 14 days on us, simply for joining. Can't wait to see you there. Can't thank you enough for being here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Your comments are always so welcome. And until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out.